Buddha has a series of reflections that he has us reflect on every day. And one of them is a question. Days and nights fly past, fly past. What am I becoming right now? And what you're becoming is based on your actions. What are you doing right now? And what kind of person are you becoming as a result? One of the advantages of meditating is that you become a meditator. A meditator has skills that other people don't have. And you always want to keep that in mind. Because this process of becoming exists on many levels. It's the mind's tendency to create worlds of experience and then go into them and inhabit them, take on an identity in them. And you've got the world right now, the big world outside, and your identity as a human being. But you've also got the world of your meditation, where you're the awareness that's watching and doing the meditation. But then you've got also other worlds that come up. Thoughts about the past, thoughts about the future, things you did in the past, things you were done to you in the past, things you plan to do in the future. And it's very easy to go into them as well. In fact, this is what we do as we fall asleep. It's so easy that this is why we dream. You're drifting off and all of a sudden you're in another world. And you could be a very different person in that world. You could do things that you would never ordinarily do. I had a dream one time when I murdered somebody. I wouldn't ordinarily murder people. But in the dream world, anything is possible. And you have to be careful about this as you meditate. In fact, it's going to be one of the main problems is getting over distractions, because the distractions are little becomings. You're sitting here with the breath, and all of a sudden you're off someplace else. Some of the time with a different identity. And sometimes as you're working with the breath energy, you come across knots in the energy that when you untie them reveal unpleasant presence, let's put it that way. You open it up and there's a really bad memory that comes back. When that happens, you have to remind yourself, I'm still a meditator. I was somebody else back in the time of that bad memory. But now I'm a meditator. I don't have to take on that identity anymore. The Buddha's approach is very different from some psychotherapists. They say you've got to enter into the emotion, feel it fully before you can get past it. What you're often doing, though, at that point is just reinforcing old habits. You want to have the mindfulness and the alertness to realize, that's not me anymore. This is where we develop that observer, the one who watches the meditation. That's a lot of what the alertness is about. You watch what's going on, and you don't go into it. If you're going to go into anything, you go into the breath. You go into inhabiting your body as much as you can right now, finding the spots in the body that are comfortable, finding the areas of the mind that are able simply to watch and notice what's happening. It's not totally passive. In fact, this role of the observer in the mind is more than just passive observing. You step back and you try to be able to access whatever wisdom you need in order to pull yourself out of those bad memories, because they're pretty sticky. They have lots of hooks. It's very easy for us to get hooked on them, so we have to learn how to shave off the hooks by looking at the narratives that would pull us in. And the large part of that narrative is what your identity is, what happened. And so you have to place question marks in that narrative. You're not there anymore. You're someplace, you're someplace else. You're someone else. The memory is lodged there, and you have to ask yourself when you go into it, what's the allure of getting into that identity again? And then, of course, what are the drawbacks? And then think about the allure of being a meditator. 
someone who can handle things like this and is not blown away. So that requires skills, because so many of our identities depend on our skills. If you learn how to play the piano well, you're a pianist. You learn how to do carpentry well, you're a carpenter. And there are certain attitudes that go along with those skills. The attitude of a meditator is that whatever comes up in the mind, I don't have to go there. I don't have to identify with that. Instead of taking on that identity again, you step back from it, and you watch it from outside. And then you watch for the part of the mind that wants to go in. That's the part you're looking out for. That's when you see the allure. And you ask yourself, why would I want to take that on again? And often the mind will not give any a reason at all, just try to find a time to go. But you have to be insistent. So you step back and try to take on this identity as the observer. And also develop some of the wisdom that goes with the observer. I was mentioning this afternoon that the Buddhist teachings on karma can really be helpful in areas like this. But not only karma, but also the immensity of his worldview. I mean, vast amounts of time, vast amounts of space. He never took us down on whether the world is infinite or not, eternal or not, but it's long enough and it's big enough that it just might as well be, in the sense that you begin to realize that injustices have been going back and forth, injuries have been going back and forth. If you take on just one identity as the victim in a particular storyline, it's really confining. But if you take on the longer view that you've taken on many identities, there have been times when you've been the victim, there have been times when you've been the oppressor. Who knows how many times, back and forth, back and forth, the other people you've been dealing with, same sort of thing, back and forth. That perspective can be liberating. You don't feel like you have to go over the injustice anymore or hide yourself from the, the pain. The pain is there, the pain is real. But you realize that nothing is gained by taking it on again. Because if you had to go take on all the pains in the past, it would be overwhelming. That's what being a meditator offers, is that you have that choice not to go in. And you have the ability to step back. As the Buddha said, wisdom comes when you see things as separate. Your awareness is one thing, the memory is something else. So we create a place in the body where you can, where you can take a stance. We try to create this new identity in the mind where you can also take a stance. We're going to have lots of compassion and wisdom as you deal with these things, compassion for everybody involved. This is one of the reasons why the Buddha has compassion as one of the Brahma Viharas. It's meant to be made universal, so that everybody in a particular story can get a dose of compassion. And then you step back and you realize that the roles have changed back and forth many, many times. That expands the range of your compassion, not only to this lifetime, but previous lifetimes. It makes it a lot easier to live with these things, because there is a part of the mind that really does not want to even think about these things, it wants to hide them. The observer, however, is able to watch them but not go into them, but not blot them out. And then it becomes not so much a matter of a horrible memory, but simply a choice. Do you want to go in there again or not? You don't have to. You realize it would be a waste of time. And that relaxes a lot of the, the tightness and tension around these things. 
not only the breath, but also the right attitude coming from reflection on karma, reflection on the Brahma-viharas. So use the tools that come with being a meditator. Develop them. You do become a new person, as I said, as you develop new skills. So take on these skills. That gives you a solid enough identity in the present moment that you don't have to keep slipping back, or you don't feel compelled to slip back. Then you realize that holding on to a lot of these things really is a burden. And you're developing the skills that can let those burdens down.